Hi there, welcome to ZV NFT. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes of your time with me today. And just remember, none of what I say is financial or investment advice. I've been spending this morning looking at OpenSea, an NFT marketplace, and at this collection called the Board Ape Yacht Club. Way too expensive for me, but they're so popular, and this is considered one of the blue chip collections. I wanted to start by sharing with you the moment that drew me in to NFTs. It was actually when I saw this headline, Beeple sold an NFT for $69 million. This American digital artist basically sold this piece at a Christie's auction. It's called the first 5,000 days. And what it does here, it combines 5,000 images in a purely digital montage and look for how much it went. I was just like, wow, you know, who would pay that much money? And there's got to be something here. So I started investigating non-fungible tokens and this is what I discovered, all right? First things first, I thought, what does fungible actually mean? And I noted down that something fungible is a good or an asset that is exchangeable. It's something that has the same value as something else. So take a dollar bill, for example. There are loads of dollar bills. They're the same value. That is fungible. I have a black pen here. There are millions of black pens like this. And whether I have this, I have this one or another one, it doesn't matter. I can get any black pen at this same cost. Take a look at the books behind me. It doesn't really matter which one I have, right? There are millions like every single one of them. This one I'm reading right now is swappable for another one like it. It has the same value. It's fungible. These chocolates that I occasionally, not often, and definitely not every single hour eat, are fungible. There are loads of them. Well, okay, well, maybe not that many, but I'll go running a little bit later or something. But essentially, you get the idea, right? You can swap something for the exact same thing for equal value. Fungible. Okay, take a look at this. You recognize her. This is the Mona Lisa. She is non-fungible. There is only one of her. And if you save this JPEG and save it on your screen or your watch, I know you don't own the Mona Lisa, okay? This is Luca, my dog. Cute, right? <laughs> he is non-fungible. There's only one of a kind. So you get the picture, right? Now to get the token bit, I want to step back for just a minute. NFTs are transacted on something called the blockchain. And you need cryptocurrency to buy NFTs. So for example, when I go to OpenSea Marketplace, I use Ether that is used in transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. So if I decide to buy something in one of these collections here, a transaction starts to process and the blockchain springs into action. That basically means that there's a network of computers, they're called nodes, that work together to get all these transactions confirmed. Then they get validated and then they are added to the blockchain. If you go to etherscan.io, you can actually see the transactions that go on. So here I can see this is a hash that has confirmed the transaction. I can see the wallet address. I can see who has sent something into that wallet, and I can also see the gas prices that are present that day for the transaction to be made. Every single person in the world can look at this and see who owns what and what was transacted for how much. So if this is confirmed with an NFT that you buy, everybody can see that you own it, whether it's a virtual real estate, piece of art, whether it is a gaming token, whether it is a membership token or a picture or photography, you own it, right? So you're probably wondering, okay, so I have a piece of art, which is what I thought. I have a JPEG. What am I going to do with it? I don't see that you just bought a JPEG and neither does the NFT community because there are some things that make an NFT really valuable, right? So one of the things is something that you can use in the real world, some kind of an application for it. So whether it's access or membership or an experience or food or a concert, it needs to be something that gives you value in the real world or something that also appreciates. The Board Ape Yacht Club is also doing all this merchandising, they're creating art exhibitions. It really is a cool exclusive club that everybody wants to be in, but the price of entry is way too high for most normal people like myself. At least I think I'm normal. 
A Cool Cats is another great collection because you feel part of something really cool. It's exciting too because community is a big aspect. It's a utility of owning an NFT. You join a group of people, usually now around the world, that all believe in the same project, right? So you're in this special community, you get perks, there's potential, it's lots of fun, the value of the NFT could appreciate, you could stand to make a lot of money. And also, a lot of these projects have kind of giving back to the community or giving back to a cause that people care about. Like I bought into Doodle Dogs, for example, because I like the idea that they were giving to dog shelters for obvious reasons, right? NFTs can also grow in financial value. Like this World of Women collection started at 0.08 ETH. That's like under $200. And now their floor price is 8.98 ETH. So just multiply that by something like 2,400. That's what the cheapest one is now worth. So these can grow in financial value and you can stand to really profit and you will earn in cryptocurrency and you can change that into fiat money or regular currency. I've seen some projects 10x in like a week. So it is pretty crazy if they go to the moon that quickly. Some people decide that they don't really want a quick flip, that they want to hold on to projects for long-term investments because they believe in the team and they believe in the idea. So NFTs are actually a really good consideration to make for investors, for creators, uh, for collectors. And they're pretty exciting. They're evolving all the time. The space is moving fast and people are just coming up with some really cool ideas. Uh, you have to be a little careful too sometimes though because there are teams that you don't really know who they are. Projects might be rug pulls, right? So they might just be out there to get the money but they don't really have a plan. So you have to do your research. You have to do your own homework because this is a new space and the creatives and the investors and the collectors are all here and so are the scammers, all right? I'll tell you all about that in another episode, yeah. I, got, I, I, I was bleeding a little bit at the end uh, or the beginning of some of all of this, I should say. Anyway, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I uh, really loved it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked what you heard or you learned anything, which I hope you did, please press the like button and subscribe to this channel. I'll see you next time on ZV NFT. Thanks.